Hey there. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is great to see you on this Tuesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Here are your top stories right now. Former President Trump appears to be facing yet another criminal indictment at the federal level. Indictment number two, which would involve his role in January 6th. We're here to make sure that the American people have an option. If you do get in the race and you spoil the elections, is, would you, would that factor in truth? I've never been in any race I've ever spoiled. I've been in races to win. It's the third time this summer we've experienced elevated levels of particulate matter due to smoke from Canadian wildfires. It's not gonna stop me from having to provide for my family and the bills are still gonna be happening. And we got a heat dome building across the south. It feels constant, the number of people going in and out of the hospital for heat-related illnesses. We see it every summer. It just seems to be much worse this summer. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. We begin this hour at the White House, where President Biden is hosting Israeli President Isaac Herzog this afternoon. Herzog is addressing a joint meeting of Congress tomorrow, and there have been tensions between the two countries since Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu returned to power. Let's get you live to Washington, where Haley Bull joins us from right outside the White House right now. Um, Haley, what can we expect with this meeting? Hey, good afternoon, Veronica. Well, we expect the meeting to highlight, uh, according to the White House, the partnership between the United States and Israel and uh, underscored the U.S. commitment to Israel's security. But this meeting uh, will come one day after President Biden uh, invited Prime Minister Netanyahu to Washington and spoke with him by phone. Uh, amid speculation about tensions as uh, Israel continues to deal with West Bank violence and concerns over a judicial overhaul plan. Now, officials say in their discussion, Biden expressed the need for, quote, the broadest possible consensus when it comes to judicial reform. That plan that uh, Israel has forged ahead with has sparked uh, protests as well as criticism on its impact on the system of checks and balances while Netanyahu and his coalition uh, have stood by this plan. It is something that uh, the administration here had previously raised concerns over earlier in the year uh, before it was put on pause amid earlier protests. Uh, and that appears to have been reiterated again in this call. Listen. This was a phone call that he and Prime Minister Netanyahu had actually been trying to get on the books for some weeks. And you shouldn't take away from the fact that they had a conversation today and that they'll meet again in the fall, that, that we have less concerns uh, over these judicial reforms or, or less concerns over uh, some of the uh, extremist activities and behavior by some members of the, the Netanyahu uh, cabinet. Those concerns are still valid. They're, uh, they, they, uh, they're disturbing. What we have found to be uh, uh, a useful process here is dialogue and diplomacy. Now, we also know, according to officials, that Biden stressed uh, maintaining or pursuing measures to maintain a two-state uh, solution and improve security, uh, as well as express concerns about settlement growth. Meanwhile, when it comes uh, to President Herzog's visit to Washington, he's also expected to meet with other administration leaders and give a joint address to Congress. That's something some progressive caucus members uh, are expected to potentially sit out. Uh, but ahead of that address, Representative Jayapal's comments uh, calling Israel a, quote, racist state uh, have drawn a lot of criticism and pushback from not only Republican members of Congress, uh, but many Democrats, including Democratic leaders. Uh, though they didn't mention her by name in a statement, uh, they did forcefully say Israel is not a racist state, uh, noting that there are members of the current Israeli, quote, governing coalition with whom they strongly disagree. Uh, now, Jayapal clarified her comments, saying uh, she does not believe that the, quote, idea of Israel as a nation uh, is racist, uh, but that is what President Herzog will be walking into when he does give his joint address uh, to Congress, Veronica. All right, Haley will live for us there at the White House covering the details on Israeli President Herzog's visit. Haley, thank you so much. I want to get you now overseas. Russia saying it intercepted close to 30 Ukrainian drones launched into Crimea this morning. It all comes a day after Ukraine is admitting it targeted a bridge between Russia and Crimea. Correspondent Jason Bellini has the details for us. 
What we know from the Southern Command is that there was some damage caused by caliber cruise missiles, not that actually hit the port facility itself, but debris when they were shot down. Six caliber cruise missiles were fired at Odessa, and all six were taken down. The extent of the damage to the port, that has not been revealed yet. Um, but what I can tell you is that it was an, um, quite a, a light show for the people in Odessa last night around 3 a.m. when all of these Shahed drones came at the city. And uh, our understanding is that the idea, the Russian idea, was to try to overwhelm the defense of that city and then to hit the city with the caliber. Cruise missiles hit port targets, but uh, that largely failed except for that debris that I mentioned. And Putin is saying that, Putin's sp spokesperson is saying that this was, in fact, in retribution for Ukraine's attack on the bridge connecting Russia to Crimea. All right, Jason, thank you for that. In the meantime, former President Trump may have a second federal criminal case ahead of him. In a post on his Truth Social website, he said that he received a letter from the special prosecutor letting him know that he is a target of an investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Now, often a letter like this precedes an indictment. Trump is already facing criminal charges on two separate fronts. The so-called hush money case filed in March by the Manhattan DA's office. Also, the classified documents case filed by the special prosecutor last month. Now, in Georgia, the state Supreme Court blocked a petition from Trump's lawyers to shut down the Fulton County investigation into whether he interfered in the state's 2020 election. The move stems from Trump's infamous 2021 call, where he urged Georgia's top election official to, quote, find enough votes to win the state. The court's decision comes weeks before state prosecutors are expected to announce whether they will be seeking charges. And in the meantime, Georgia Governor Brian Kemp addressing Trump's animosity toward him. That came after Kemp declined to take steps to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results. He was mad at me. I was not mad at him. I told him exactly what I could and couldn't do when it came to the election, and I followed the law and the Constitution. But that's a lot bigger than Donald Trump. It's a lot bigger than me. It's a lot bigger than the Republican Party. That was all part of Governor Kemp's one-on-one -on -one with CNN's Caitlin Collins last night. During the interview, he also expressed frustration about the pace of the Fulton County investigation, saying that he is disappointed that it is taking so long. So could there be a viable third party in the United States? The political movement known as No Labels unveiled its platform last night at a town hall in New Hampshire. Scripps News correspondent Kevin Cirilli was the moderator, and he takes a closer look at what No Labels is all about. At a town hall in New Hampshire, Senator Joe Manchin refusing to rule out if he'll run for president, bucking Democrats who say if he got in the race, he'd spoil the 2024 election for President Biden. If you do get in the race and you spoil the election, is, would, you, would that factor into your I've never been in any race I've ever spoiled. I've been in races to win. And if I get in a race, I'm going to win. He spoke at a forum backed by No Labels, a bipartisan group that is pushing for a moderate platform for governing, a platform they say would bring the two political parties back to the middle, pushing for everything from reining in government spending, universal gun background checks, as well as a pathway to citizenship for dreamers. But No Labels has also sparked criticism. They are weighing whether or not to run a presidential ticket, a unity ticket, they say, that would feature both a Democrat and a Republican running together. And that has drawn questions about who is funding their effort. I, I haven't made a decision, and I'm not going to make, I've never made a decision. Ever. Let me say this to all of you. The only place in the world, in America, does the next election start the day after the last election. Yeah. Doesn't happen anywhere else, but here, we expect it being just a, a, a continuous cycle. That's not what the American people want. Give them a break. Manchin has said that he will announce his political plans by the end of the year, close to the deadline for the paperwork that he would need to file should he choose to run for Senate re-election in West Virginia a state that former President Trump carried by nearly 40 percentage points in 2020 over President Biden. We're not here. I'm not here running for president tonight. I'm not. I'm here trying to basically save the nation. I'm concerned more now than I've ever been concerned in my lifetime. Reporting from Manchester, New Hampshire, Kevin Cirilli, Scripps News.
And you can take a deeper dive on all of these stories and a whole lot more online. You can always check us out at scriptsnews.com. Also, Scripps News on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Threads. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, emergency rooms seeing an increase in patients due to heat. Why they say it's getting worse. Plus, one of the biggest natural lakes in the western United States drying out right now. The larger impact of this slowly dwindling resource. Also, we would like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. The number is on your screen right now. It's one 4 scripts Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? Because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. Welcome to this year's cheese rolling competition. Who will catch the cheese and win the $500 prize? Who looks like we got a first timer coming down the hill now? Barrel rolling down the hill. That's going to leave a mark. Yeah, it is. Yeah. There's an easier way you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less when you download Dave. This is a paid advertisement for legal services. If you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma, call now. Billions have been set aside for victims. You may be entitled to compensation. Call now, 1-800-712-3700. That's 1-800-712-3700. Still tying your shoes? It's 2023. Hands-free shoes are the next big thing. No more hands, tying, pulling, peel crushing. And once they're on, they stay on. Don't take my word for it. They have over 13,000 five-star reviews, free shipping, free returns, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. A style or color for every personality. Time to step up your shoe game and step into Kizik. Get 15% off today at kizik.com TV. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong. 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. So much of the western U.S. is baking under a heat wave right now that's stretched over the past week. And it's been so hot for so long that Phoenix has claimed an unwanted record. The city now seeing temperatures higher than 110 degrees for 19 days in a row. And that streak is expected to get even longer with those high temperatures expected to stick around through the end of the week. And the heat is keeping hospitals busy across the country. Eleni Dow with Scripps News Phoenix shows us how doctors are managing an influx of patients with heat-related illnesses. This is what Valley Wise Health has been using every single day in this extreme heat wave. They usually put two five-gallon buckets of ice to help bring the temperatures down. And they are seeing more people come in because of this extreme heat. It feels constant, the number of people going in and out of the hospital for heat-related illnesses. Dr. Kara Guerin has been with ValleyWise for 13 years. Like many things, it's exhausting. It's, it's kind of 
par for the course. We see it every summer. It just seems to be much worse this summer. As an ER doctor, she's seen what extreme heat can do to the human body. Some people get to the point where they're no longer sweating. Some, a lot of people are very lightheaded, dizzy, uh, cramps, feeling very poorly, and some people even have temperatures. We've had someone up to 110 degrees, which is not uh, oftentimes very fatal or certainly life changing. Your normal body temperature should be between 97 to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll also use this raft like device with a lot of ice and bring down a person's body temperature. We use it on a daily basis daily basis. They're one time use, but we use it all the time. Sometimes people need IV fluids. Oftentimes their kidneys aren't working very well, so we have to make sure that improves. If they're to the point where they can tolerate uh, fluids and are looking better, sometimes they can be discharged. With the 110 degree plus temps continuing for the foreseeable future, Dr. Guerin hopes people will keep hydrating, but expects more people coming in needing help. I'm Melanie Dow for Scripps News. Now, bodies of water like lakes and ponds can be a godsend for people looking to cool off during extreme heat. But one massive lake in Montana has been disappearing. National correspondent Maritza Giorgio looks at what it means for millions of people who depend on this water source. Here at Northwest Montana's pristine Flathead Lake, we're seeing water anomalies that we haven't seen in our lifetime, and it's not just here. I'm one of the few people that have my boat in. Most of my neighbors pulled theirs. They never pull their boats ever till the end of August or mid-September. But that's the reality this year for many boat owners on Northwest Montana's pristine Flathead Lake, the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. This is just a beautiful lake. It's, it's wonderful living here. The water is the lifeblood of us as tribal people. You can't get more important than that. <laughs> Um, and our relationship with the water is, is paramount. Without it, it is life for us. Without it, we're not here. And now that water is down, almost two feet below what's considered full pool. That's never happened during the summer months since the lake's SKQ hydroelectric dam was built on the southwest end in 1930. It's owned by Energy Keepers, a corporation of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes, which generates electricity for parts of Montana and elsewhere. We have never been this low in the period of record for water supply coming into the lake, ever. Some frustrated locals have asked if the water could have been managed better through the dam and the amount of water released from the lake. Operators say it's not about the water being let out, but a lack of water coming in because of drought and changing climate conditions. I can't create water. <laughs> you know, we can only do what we can do with the water that's coming. Water management is going to define the West for better or for worse because we ha are in a arid to semi-arid climate, this whole side of the continent. The license from the federal government requires SKQ Dam to release a minimum amount of water downstream for endangered species protection. SKQ operators say they went to near minimum outflows back in March, but it wasn't enough to keep levels up. Every single month, the water supply forecast has come in below average except for May. A dry winter followed by an extremely warm May meant a rapid melt of snowpack all at once. Nobel Prize winning climate change expert Steve Running predicted decades ago what's happening now. These are literally the same topics that 25 years ago I was saying are on their way and sure enough they're here. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, these aren't surprises. Now, SKQ dam operators say it's a zero-sum game. The lowest amount of water that can be released from the lake is more than what's coming in naturally through rain and snowmelt. It's a big deal. Uh, it's, and so from that perspective, you know, we have to think, well, this is the tip of the iceberg. It's a problem we've seen elsewhere in the West. Lake Mead, which supplies most of the water used in the Las Vegas Valley, fell to record lows this time last year. At Flathead, the issue is more than just having a lake for Montanans to boat on. So for us, it's generation. We're far below average. Mm -hmm. In the entire region, hydropower is about 60% of what we're normally generating this time of year for electricity. Downstream, low flows are also hard on native fish. It's impacting farmers who rely on the water for irrigation. There's also economic impacts of a shrinking lake with local officials estimating Flathead generates hundreds of millions of dollars in recreational spending. It's unfortunate and I'm sure it's hurting some businesses around here. Three months out of the year is all of our business. And so 
When we start seeing it slow down just because of the water level, that's a big bummer for, I mean, everybody. This lakeside restaurant may fare better than others because it has a floating dock that can adjust to lower water levels. Floating docks are awesome to have in this situation. Boaters can't dock at other restaurants. Rentals are slow and fuel sales are way down after so many residents pulled their boats from the water. A push by local politicians to add more water from the Hungry Horse Reservoir upstream was denied, with the management team citing concerns over impacts on fish and water levels next year. As it stands, people who want to recreate on Flathead Lake may need to make some adjustments. You can only make the best of it because it's, you know, nothing that uh, yeah. any of us can control, but right. try to stay positive and keep hoping people get out on the lake and come here. But it's still a beautiful lake. Um, I don't think we lose that. I think we lose this, this luxury of having the lake at full pool through the entirety of the summer. You know, that's a luxury that's been um, afforded to us since the dam was built. Maritza Giorgio, Scripps News, Flathead Lake. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, smoke from Canadian wildfires blanketing the East Coast again. How breathing the dirty air could impact your health. Ready? Go! Okay, uh, doctor. Operation! No, uh, nurse. Uh, college? <laughs> what? You have to go to college to be a doctor or a nurse. Hurry, time's almost up. Okay, okay. The most amazing care. Mm. Oh, Bessie. Oh, I know. Shrine. Time's up. <sighs> okay, our turn. Ready? Go. They changed my life. Kindness Hospital for Children. My life was changed because of monthly support for people just like you. You called the number on your screen with a monthly gift so kids like me can play in the game of life. Because of people like you, I can play the violin. I can do things now that were impossible before. I can draw. I can play basketball. <laughs> When you call or go online today with your monthly gift of just $19, just 63 cents a day, we'll send you this adorable Love to the Rescue blanket as our gift to you. It'll be a reminder of how you're standing by our side, just like family. Thank you. Your gifts help our daughter. Your monthly gift right now at loveshrinders.org makes moments like this possible for kids like me. And me. Thank you for giving. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Please call or go online now. If operators are busy, call again. Or go to loveshrines.org to give right away. Thank you. Hi, I'm Chu, Head of Quality and Engineering at our place. We created the Cast Iron Always Pan because the perfect cast iron did not exist. The Cast Iron Always Pan is a single cast construction with a heavy duty base. This means it holds heat really well and cooks evenly. And there's a matte black interior for perfect browning. It even comes with silicon grips for safe handling. It's guaranteed to sell out, so you should probably get yours like now. There's a better way to begin your mornings. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Morning Rush. Thanks so much for being with us. Context and conversation. This next story, we were talking about this earlier. Mm -hmm. Get the stories that will shape each day. Here with us now is meteorologist Scott Withers. We got just wave after wave after wave. So you can get on with yours. Make sure you stay with us as we monitor this developing story. Morning Rush, weekday morning starting at 7, 6 central, only on Scripps News. Welcome back to Scripps News Live. Smoke from wildfires burning across Canada expected to once again cause air quality problems for millions of Americans today. Code orange alerts which signal unhealthy air quality for vulnerable people are expected in parts of 23 states. Now for a time yesterday, Washington DC had some of the worst air quality in the world. Right now it's number seven. 
The smoke is stretching as far south as Tennessee and Georgia and is expected to cover much of the east coast until later this evening. For weeks, officials have been encouraging people to limit their time outdoors if an air quality alert is in effect, but some people can't do that. Taylor Nimmo with Scripps News Cincinnati takes us to a construction site where some workers have been noticing a difference in their health. It's not going to stop me from having to provide for my family and the bills are still going to be happening. The current air quality alert is in the unhealthy for sensitive groups category. Some people haven't noticed a difference. Uh, not yet. No coughing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. But others are feeling the impacts. Mostly headaches and a little blurry, I, I will say. It can impact people differently. Others have reported irritation in the throat, nose, or eyes. It's the third time this summer we've experienced elevated levels of particulate matter due to smoke from Canadian wildfires. Once again, it's reached dangerous levels. It could have long-term impacts on people with it continuing to reoccur. You can see this is a really widespread event. Christina Boss with the Southwest Ohio Air Quality Agency says the three significant smoke events we've had in Cincinnati have actually been as a result of fires in three different parts of Canada. So how long will this continue to impact us? There's a lot of factors at play there, and, and so it's very difficult to put a guess out as to how long the fires will last and whether or not the weather is going to continue to bring it to us. My uh, guess is that since it's been such a dry season with a lot of fires up there, we could see it continue through the summer months. And in the meantime... Well, I think my advice for everyone is to limit contributing to the fire and smoke in any way. So so don't burn anything, you know, um, yard waste, uh, campfires, things like that. That's, that's the goal. Hopefully everything gets back to normal and everybody stays safe out here, you know. That was Taylor Nimmo reporting there from Cincinnati. So all of that heat, the poor air quality, it's not really stopping people from getting outdoors and braving those lines to buy lottery tickets. I was willing to come out here regardless of no matter what the weather it's be like, yeah. Show me the money, baby. I'm trying to come down here like everybody else and get lucky, you know. There you go. Well, unfortunately, there was no winner in last night's Powerball drawing, and that means that tomorrow's jackpot is going to be at least $1 billion. Yeah, it is the third largest Powerball jackpot in U.S. history, the seventh highest lottery jackpot overall, and the last time anybody won the top prize was April 19th, and that was 38 drawings ago. Best of luck to you. Now, from a game of chance to one that combines both luck and skill, we're talking poker here. Last night, Daniel Weinman won the World Series of Poker. It's an event held every year in Las Vegas. Weinman walked away with more than $12 million. Wow. Lucky guy. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Remember, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. And if you're staying with us, we have much more news headed your way, including new proposed guidelines that could change the way doctors diagnose Alzheimer's. I'm going to be speaking with a doctor that was involved in that proposal next. Municipal bonds don't usually get the media coverage the stock market does. In fact, most people don't find them all that exciting. But if you're looking for the potential for consistent income that's federally tax-free, now is an excellent time to consider municipal bonds from Henyon & Walsh. If you have at least $10,000 to invest, call and talk with one of our bond specialists at 1-800-465-8465. We'll send you our exclusive bond guide, free, with details about how bonds can be an important part of your portfolio. Henyon & Walsh has specialized in fixed income and growth solutions for 30 years and offers high-quality municipal bonds from across the country. They provide the potential for regular income, are federally tax-free, and have historically low risk. Call today to request your free bond guide. 1-800-465-8465. That's 1-800-465-8465. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. 
If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Del Cruz. Great to see you on this Tuesday. Let's get you caught up on the day's top stories right now. Former President Trump says the Justice Department has sent him a letter saying he is a target of an investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Letters like these often precede indictments. Trump is also the target of a Georgia investigation and he is calling these probes, quote, witch hunts and the weaponization of law enforcement. Now, as far as the classified documents case against Trump and co-defendant Walt Nauta, federal judge Eileen Cannon will be holding a pretrial hearing on that today. She'll be outlining the rules and procedures for using classified evidence in the case. A magistrate handled Trump and Nauta's arraignment, so this will be the first time that Judge Cannon will hear arguments in this case since indictments were issued. U.S. officials say an American who was detained after crossing into North Korea from South Korea is a soldier. It is unclear whether the soldier was on duty. 30,000 North Koreans have defected to the South since the Korean War ended, but defections to the North are rare. Alzheimer's experts proposing new guidelines that will help the diagnosis of the memory loss disease. Experts unveiled a seven-point rating system similar to how cancer has been diagnosed. Now, this rating system would be based on the extent of the disease's progression, and it would also eliminate descriptions such as mild, moderate, and severe. The new system will even include a stage zero, which will be the diagnosis for patients who carry the gene that leads to Alzheimer's. The scale was developed to be more accurate and give a better representation of a person's diagnosis. Now, it all comes at a time when the FDA approved a new Alzheimer drug that slows the progression of memory loss, and a second drug is expected to be approved this year. These proposed guidelines still need to be reviewed by experts, and changes could come once that all happens. Joining me now live is Dr. Percy Griffin. He is the Director of Scientific Engagement for the Alzheimer's Association. Dr. Griffin, thank you so much for your time today. I understand that the Alzheimer's Association has proposed these new guidelines. Explain how this all came about. Sure, and thanks for having me here today. Just before I get started, I just want to say it's such an exciting time in our field. And this level of excitement and progress is what has prompted these new guidelines. So um, the thinking behind these guidelines is to ensure that the disease is defined by the biological changes. So the changes that happen in the body, not the symptoms. We want to make sure that, you know, similar to other diseases like, say, diabetes, when you have the changes in your body that, um, that signify the disease, we, uh, we don't wait until the symptoms before we, um, before we, def we define the disease, but we can, so that we can start treating early and people can have um, ac um, access to early detection and accurate diagnosis so that they can start treatments and other risk reduction strategies um, earlier on in the disease course. Yeah, it's great news uh, knowing that you could be a little bit more proactive when it comes to the treatment of this disease. Now, we're looking at your release statement, which says that experts are now better understanding Alzheimer's. And in particular, doctor, these biomarkers. Explain what these biomarkers are and how, how they help with a diagnosis. Sure. So a biomarker for the people listening at home is anything that you can measure in the body that gives you um, a sense of what's happening within the body when someone has a disease. So, um, you know, for example, in cancer, you can you can look in people's blood, for example, you can take a piece of the cancer and go look at it under the microscope. For Alzheimer's, some of the um, some of the most advanced and most commonly used uh, biomarkers have to do with imaging. 
So they, uh, they take a picture of people's brains while they're still alive. But in recent years, we're having rapid development of these biomarkers that uh, take advantage of blood. So they can look in, um, in people's blood and see some of these different species that are associated with Alzheimer's. That is very, very exciting because it means that you don't have to, um, you don't have to sit in giant machines that take a picture of the brain. And these can, um, these can one day increase the access to these, uh, to these, um, these diagnostic tools. However, they're in, they're in active development, but they're not in your doctor's office just quite yet. All right. And I, I can hear the excitement in your voice as you talk about all of this. Uh, but I see that you're there in a hotel room right now because I know that you are the Alzheimer's International Conference in Amsterdam. Doctor, what has the reaction been like so far? What are you hearing? Um, what are other doctors saying about these new guidelines? Yeah, so the um, the reaction, and, and so just to give people context as well, we're at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference here in Amsterdam, um, where we have uh, 10,000 individuals, over 7,000 of those are um, in person, and over 3,000 are online, who are participating in these dialogues around Alzheimer's. Now, the, the reaction has been overwhelmingly positive. It's a step in the right direction for our field, and it reflects the evolution of the science. And that's what's important. As scientists, we need to keep up with, um, with the scientific progress so that clinicians have the tools that allow them to accurately and um, early in the disease course diagnose this disease. Now, I know that you said that this is not quite available in a doctor's office as of yet, and I know that that uh, a lot of research is still being done around these proposed guidelines, but I wanted to ask you about the future of all of this, how this is going to change Alzheimer's diagnoses going forward, and really what comes next in the process? Yes, so um, the Alzheimer's Association has uh, uh, put it up on their website, so visit alz.org slash ni-aa. And we're go and um, we're we've opened it up for comments so people can download the entire document as well as um, you know the different tables associated with it and provide comments because we believe that a document of this importance should be made uh, for the field by the field so we want comments from um, from people and in terms of these um, some of these. Um, other tools that I talked about, the blood biomarkers and whatnot, they're not in your doctor's offer, um, your uh, primary care physician's office just quite yet, but they're being used in specialized clinical settings and also helping with the recruitment of, of individuals into clinical trials. It's really exciting to hear about not just these proposed guidelines, but also the new drugs that are being developed around the disease. It sounds like a lot of progress is being made in this area. Dr. Percy Griffin from the Alzheimer's Association. Doctor, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I want to get you to some other health news right now. A new study shows that dozens of sports supplement labels are misrepresenting what's actually in the bottle. In some cases, the supplements contain stimulants that have been banned by the FDA. National correspondent Stephen Graddock explains the risks for us. What we found was really shocking. Capsules, pills, and powders, all claiming to make you stronger and more energized, could cause you harm. You have no idea what you're putting in your body. Dr. Peter Cohen with Cambridge Health Alliance was among the researchers who studied nearly 60 types of sports supplements sold by online retailers. The products labeled up to five new botanical ingredients, which are plants used for medicinal purposes that claim to boost health and better workouts. Only like 10% products had an accurate description of what was in it. Results showed 89% of the supplements claiming to use at least one of the botanicals misrepresented what was actually in the bottle. Some levels of the ingredients were up to 330% higher than the listed amount. Researchers also discovered 40% of the products didn't have any botanicals at all. Cohen says that means they don't have a firm understanding of what's actually in the supplements or what the risks are because the ingredients have never been tested in humans for safety. We only screened for a certain number of um, chemicals and drugs. It's possible that, that there are still other ingredients that might be harmful that we didn't yet identify in these products. Cohen adds the most troubling discovery is some of the supplements even contained stimulants banned by the FDA. Cohen says the stimulants paired with exercise 
could cause serious health problems. Heart attacks and something called arrhythmias or the heart, its rhythm being out of whack or even bleeding into the brain are things that I worry about if someone takes um, a high dose of a stimulant and then goes and exercises. The FDA has very little oversight when it comes to dietary supplements, including ensuring they are effective and safe. Current laws do require a supplement manufacturer to oversee the quality and safety of its products. But the FDA does not test products or approve claims like faster weight loss or more energy. Regulators can only come in if there's widespread evidence the supplements cause harm or are misleading customers about their ingredients. But Cohen says even then, the FDA struggles to stay on top of the mislabeled and fraudulent products. They can't get a handle on getting these off store shelves because manufacturers can simply introduce another brand, reprint their labels, and uh, keep on selling their products. The study notes the sample size was small and results could vary based on batches. But still, Cohen says using the supplements isn't worth the risk. Just because the ingredients accurately list on label doesn't mean it's safe. Stephen Graddick, Scripps News. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, are you missing your favorite hot sauce? How restaurants have been navigating the sriracha shortage. Also, mortgage rates are on the rise again. We're going to take a closer look at the chances that house prices could actually fall. We'll be right back. Hi, friends. Richard Karn here. Now, I'm known as the guy who can fix just about anything, but the technology in most appliances requires very special training to fix. My point is, even I know when I've met my match, and that's why my family has Choice Home Warranty. So we won't get stuck with high-priced repairs. Choice Home Warranty covers over 25 major home systems and appliances. That's your AC, heating, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances, and so much more. Imagine for less than a cup of coffee a day, Choice Home Warranty can help protect you from expensive major system and appliance breakdowns that your homeowner's insurance doesn't cover. But you have to call now before it's too late. Every homeowner should have Choice Home Warranty. Your homeowner's insurance is not going to cover your appliances. Washing machine, dryer, refrigerator, air condition. If I had any issues arise, they were able to take care of it immediately. Now, homeowner's insurance won't protect you when your home's major systems and appliances break down due to normal wear and tear. But Choice Home Warranty will. They can help cover repairs and replacements. Choice Home Warranty is the best warranty we've ever used. It would save you so much money in the long run. Hey, I'm not the only one raving about Choice Home Warranty. They were named a Best Home Warranty Company and Best Claim Service by U.S. News 360 Reviews. Call Choice Home Warranty now and get access to a nationwide network of over 15,000 technicians and the latest appointment setting technology so you'll know when they're on their way. If I have an issue with an appliance or something around the house, I just call up Choice Home Warranty and I don't have to worry about that. So... Do what this old DIYer did and call Choice Home Warranty now before something breaks down. Tell them I sent you and get your first month free. Call Choice Home Warranty before it's too late and get protection for your heating, AC, plumbing, kitchen and laundry appliances and more. Call for your free quote today. Call in the next five minutes and get your first month free. 800-360-4534. 800-360-4534. It's Christmas all July at Balsam Hill. It's never too early to save, so why wait? Get amazing deals now on our wide variety of exclusive designs. Find the perfect tree at up to 50% off at balsamhill.com. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then, Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. Sunday nights on In Real Life, Scripps News journalists take you off the grid. We were just a bunch of kids with a camera. And to the heart of the story. In Real Life, Sunday at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. So inflation is easing, but the housing market is still stubbornly high. Recent data from Freddie Mac shows mortgage rates average nearly 7%, and that's the highest that they've been all year. 
Experts say low inventory and high demand are contributing to the higher rates, and they expect inventory to stay tight for the rest of the year. And that's partly due to existing homeowners staying put after locking in low rates during the pandemic. In the meantime, it looks like it's raining on the Sunshine State's real estate market. A newly released report shows home values in four Florida markets will likely decline during the next year. Jay Kashmir with Scripps News West Palm Beach spoke with experts to determine if sellers should be worried right now. Florida's hot housing market seems to be trending in another direction in one city on the Treasure Coast, if you read a new report from CoreLogic. The data suggests Port St. Lucie could see home prices sharply decline over the next 12 months. Port St. Lucie, the reason why it's showing up on this report, I think, is because of the mortgages that have been taken out and the assumption that there will be foreclosures based on mortgages. You know, Holly Meyer Lucas says a number of factors go into the report to form an algorithm behind it. Factors like the amount of mortgages, school ratings, interest rates, and potential tax assessments. But there's one thing she says they're not factoring in. And I think if you're buying a home right now, I think it's dangerous to look at this report and think that that is going to be happening in Port St. Lucie. Home prices will stabilize, but they're not going to drop so significantly. And the biggest reason for that is our population increase here. According to Holly Meyer Lucas, the four Florida markets cited in this report are all part of the mass migration of people here to Florida. In fact, we spoke with one local real estate brokerage firm here in Port St. Lucie. They told us they can't build homes fast enough for the amount of people that want to live in them. You know, I tell people if they're waiting for the crash to happen. Please don't hold your breath. It's not happening anytime soon, in my opinion here. Steve Banasiak, a real estate broker at Barron Real Estate, says the sky is not about to fall here. And all you have to do is look at the numbers. Right now, we're still sitting well within a seller's market at about 2.3 months of inventory right now. And if we flash back about 10 years ago, we were probably at about five and a half months of inventory right now. So we've still got a ways to go before we actually start going more into a balanced market and more towards a buyer's market. Benicia says St. Lucie County has 1,100 homes on the market. Construction is booming to keep up with the amount of people moving to Florida daily. Simply put, the optics of the new report seem shady, given the fact the Sunshine State and Port St. Lucie in particular continue to shine when it comes to real estate. That was Jay Kashmir reporting for us there from Port St. Lucie, Florida. So Sriracha fans are all fired up right now about this ongoing sauce shortage. Just to get your hands on a 28-ounce bottle, what well, could cost you a lot, hundreds of dollars right now on eBay, in fact. Hannah McDonald of Scripps News Nashville shows us how one restaurant known for its spicy dishes is trying to navigate the shortage. Snack size fried rice, uh, ginger beef, vermicelli. And, uh, the owners of East Side Pho at The Wash know what's hot. Some of the most popular dishes at ESP are the spicy pork noodles. Are you a sauce guy? Through no fault of their own. I'm a sauce guy, yeah. Sriracha. A crowd favorite at the Vietnamese restaurant is in short supply. We have packets. And we have this one. It's like the hodgepodge. Yeah. Hoi Fung, the maker of the most popular sriracha variety, is facing major production issues for the second year in a row. The company says up and down weather is affecting the quality and availability of the red jalapeno peppers it uses. It just seems like it's really hard to get everywhere. We went to five different grocery stores in Nashville, including two international markets, and couldn't find a single bottle. When you kind of go and look at what our sriracha supply is right now, it used to be tons of bottles, green cap. Now it's like a little of everything. I just get the one with the green lid. Regulars expect to find sriracha at ESP. You got a curry with chicken coming in? It's one of those things that you just feel like is going to be there when you go looking for it, you know? They get that the shortage is out of the restaurant's control. I know that it happens. Sriracha is not something I would have thought would be uh, a shortage in the world. Chad Newton and his wife, Chef Gracie, are buying individual bottles since distributors' supplies have dried up. But it is what it is. We have to have it. So it's just another like tough thing for small restaurant owners to have to navigate. Okay, I might come back for that later. Okay, so just say fried rice? Yeah. We're doing our best. Here you got it. To kind of get them the best product, always. That's kind of, you know, what we do. In East Nashville. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Hannah McDonald. I'll probably dream about Sriracha tonight. 
And that was Hannah McDonald reporting for us from Nashville, Tennessee. Straight ahead on Scripps News Live, we're going to take you to a store full of nostalgia that's getting a boost from this summer's top movies. We'll have that for you next. I've been putting off getting life insurance and I'm not getting any younger. Have you been thinking about getting a life insurance plan but just keep putting it off? Was that a yes? Then this message is for you. I'm David Denowitz and I know the importance of life insurance. And that's why I'm here to tell you it's not too late to get the coverage you need. If you're between the ages of 45 and 85, you can get a policy with a benefit of up to $25,000 and rates available at $5 a week. The phone lines are now open. Just call 800-354-6059. And your acceptance is guaranteed. I have a pre-existing medical condition. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes. Can I get accepted without a medical exam? Yes. If you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down for this guaranteed acceptance life insurance regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions, and rates start at just $5 a week. Remember, if you're between 45 and 85, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. Nothing's more important than family. So call now, pick up the phone, and get guaranteed acceptance life insurance today. Just call 800-354-6059. I'm 72 and on a fixed income. Is my acceptance guaranteed? Yes, your acceptance is guaranteed and your rate can never go up for any reason. You can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's just one simple question. Are you between 45 and 85? If you answered yes, don't wait another minute. Call now. The call is absolutely free and there is no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-354-6059. That's 800-354-6059. One way to avoid expensive car repair bills is to be a race car driver. The other is endurance. Endurance saved me more than $7,000. Without endurance, breakdowns can cost thousands. With endurance, you're covered. Endurance covers nearly every car on the road. Plus, you pick the mechanic you trust. Act now for $300 off any plan, plus a year of elite benefits and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Call 1-855-588-2580 now. There shouldn't be a stigma around talking about mental health or taking medication for your anxiety if that's what you need to feel better. And that's something I know firsthand. That's why I trust HERS. They help women access quality online mental health care anytime through the HERS app. Get started today at ForHERS.com. The why is where curiosity is intentional. Because when you ask the why behind the news, the world opens up before your eyes. The Why, Saturday nights at 8, 7 central, only on Scripps News. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. So at the White House yesterday, President Biden and Senator Bernie Sanders pushed for more workers to join unions. The meeting came during a time when actors and writers have walked off the job and Teamsters have been threatening a strike against United Parcel Service or UPS. United Auto Workers have warned that they could be next to strike. Senator Sanders explained what he saw as bad news when it came to these demonstrations. All across the economy, what we are seeing now is working people, often young people, white collar, blue collar in between, are standing up and saying it is important for us to have a union so that we can earn better wages, better working conditions, better pensions and dignity on the job. The bad news in the midst of all of this in terms of union organizing is that we're seeing an unprecedented level of uh, anti-union illegal activity on the part of corporate America. Now that Hollywood actors have joined writers on the picket lines, it won't be long until viewers feel the fallout. According to three studio executives from the New York Times interviewed, the dual strikes won't have an impact on release dates if they are settled by Labor Day. But films set to debut next year will need to be pushed back. And if the work stoppage lingers deep into September, the executives say that could delay the release schedule by six months or more. 
and at least one major chain could reportedly go bankrupt without new films to show. So Barbie, Transformers, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have made that 2023 toy movie summer. And as a result, the toys themselves have been making big comebacks. Flora Sanders of Scripps News Nashville spoke with a man whose business is benefiting from all of the interest. This is always where my heart's been. I, I couldn't, I don't think I'd be happy at a desk job. I've always wanted to have like a, a toy shop. And today, Matthew Powell has that with his totally rad toy house. There's E.T., Gremlins, awesome movies we grew up with. It's just the perfect job for him. As someone who literally wears his love of all things retro cool. This is actually from the end of Evil Dead 2. Groovy. The 80s was the best time. No arguments for me there. And I don't have to tell you, toy sales aren't just child's play. It's big business, especially during a summer movie season like this one. If you look at the top 10 box office earners for 2023, what you'll find is that all 10 films are existing properties, known characters or known franchises. Number one, Super Mario Brothers. Number 10, Indiana Jones. And that's good news for a place like this. Oh yeah, nostalgia is a powerful thing. Right. And a lot of its reinvigorated interest in titles that have been around for more than 40 years or maybe a lot longer. People have known her name since 1959. While it remains to be seen what the Barbie film will do for sales in 2023, last year, the Barbie brand made $1.5 billion. Yeah, that's what we said. Barbie, we're getting a lot more people wanting to sell us Barbie collections because I think because of the movie, they think they can retire on it now. New summer films are also bringing toy boost for both Transformers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles is probably in the biggest boom it's been in since the early 90s when it was so big. Matthew says there's something key. They got the whole line here. To the continued interest in these properties after so many years. Parents share the things they grew up with with their children. Very old cartoons? Yeah, like 1990. I think. Hey, that's not old. And whatever toy, whatever properties next to see a renaissance. This is He-Man from Masters Universe, and this is Lion-O from Thundercats. Matthews, ready for it. I'm Forrest Sanders for Scripps News. Gotta love all those toys. All right, ABC's Bachelor franchise is entering its golden era this September. He posts his thirst traps in a leather-bound album. His DMs have postage. He gets the early bird special anytime he wants. If you call him, he'll answer the phone. He doesn't have gray hair. He has wisdom highlights. Florida wants to retire and move to him. He's Gary. Oh, you gotta love it. His DMs require postage. It's so excellent. So this is Gary Turner, and he is the first Golden Bachelor. Now, this is all similar to the original dating show, The Bachelor, but with more uh, seasoned contestants, if you will. The 71-year-old Golden Bachelor is a father, he's a grandfather, and he's also a widow. His high school sweetheart passed away in 2017. Gary says that he is ready to put himself out there and quote, Find a love that's going to stand the test of time in his golden years. Looks good. Thank you so much for watching Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on ScriptsNews.com. And we have much more news headed your way on Scripps News Live. We're back after this. I was having problems with my legs and my feet. I suffered a lot of cramps swelling. I would dread going up and down steps. Tingling in my legs due to circulation issues. The, the aches and pains uh, have just continued to increase. Did you know if you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, or are over 40, your leg aches and pains could be from poor circulation? Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. Revitive uses breakthrough technology to get your calf muscles pumping like a second heart to increase blood flow, reducing leg aches and pains, cramps, or swollen feet and ankles. Plus, it's drug-free. The cramping was terrible, and I don't get that anymore. Thank you, Revitive. Revitive is FDA cleared and clinically proven to increase oxygen-rich blood flow during use. The smart stimulation works so well, over 3 million people use Revitive. As a firefighter, I'm constantly on my feet 
I wish I had known about Revitive a lot earlier. Um, it would have made a huge difference in really who I am today. Revitive has given me a better quality of life because I am living without pain. Revitive reduces leg pains two times more than exercise alone in just six weeks. We want to take walks. We want to do more social activities. Just the typical things in life that I did not feel well enough before Revitive that I was able to do. Yeah, Revitive is regenerizing my legs and making me feel like, let's do more. Go to Revitive.com now to learn how Revitive can help reduce leg aches and pains, swelling, and cramps. The doctor said, go for it. And I'm in the best shape in terms of my legs and my ankles and my feet than I've ever been. Try Revitive. You will see the difference. It works. It worked for me. Get the most out of life with Revitive. Visit Revitive.com. That's R-E-V-I-T-I-V-E.com. Or call 1-800-317-6641. That's 1-800-317-6641 today. Or visit Revitive.com. Order now. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon. It's now 1 p.m. in the east and 10 a.m. out west. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Always good to see you today. We begin this hour with some news on the former president. Former President Trump is looking at a potential another federal indictment, which could be on the horizon. He said he received a letter from special counsel Jack Smith saying he is the target of the DOJ's investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 election. And a letter like that often comes right before an indictment. Trump is already facing criminal charges in two other cases right now. The Justice Department's classified documents case and the hush money case happening in New York. Let's get you right out to national political correspondent Abba Joy Burnett, who has been tracking both of these cases for us. She joins us now live from Capitol Hill. Abba Joy, break down these two cases for us and explain to us what is in that letter from the special counsel. Hi, Veronica. Well, we don't know exactly what is in the letter from the special counsel, because keep in mind that this is something that the former president put out on his own social media. At this point, the Department of Justice, they have no official comment. But former President Donald Trump has said that he is the target of the DOJ's investigation into what happened here at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. And in that letter, the former or in that post on social media, the former president said he's been asked to appear before that grand jury within four days. So if we're counting here, that could potentially be on Thursday. And if people are wondering what are the potential charges that we could see associated with something like this, one of them could be um, seditious conspiracy and another one could be obstruction of an official proceeding. We spoke with a former federal prosecutor who's really been tracking this case and other cases as well. And even though the former president said he's been asked to appear before a grand jury, this former federal prosecutor told me that that it is very unlikely that he will actually do so. And here's why. I think that if he listens to his lawyers and their advice, he will not speak to this grand jury. Because at this stage of the game, it appears that they've already decided to present an indictment. And there's nothing that he can do, quite frankly, that is going to do anything but hurt him if he talks to these grand jurors. And Veronica, at this point, the Department of Justice, they have no official comment on this uh, breaking news today that the former president has been issued a target letter. All right. I want to go ahead and uh, move now to the uh, U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon, who is in Florida. This is the first time she's going to be hearing mm -hmm. arguments in the case. Um, bring us up to speed as to what we can expect in this case and what we can expect from this judge. Well, if you've been following these storylines, you woke up this morning knowing that today was going to be a consequential day, not knowing that the former president was going to post something about a potential target letter. We were expecting today to be all about the SEPA hearing, the classified documents hearing down, down in Florida today, where officials will be going through that to figure out how these classified documents will be handled in that other case where the former president has been indicted on allegations of mishandling very 
sensitive classified documents. And that is set to start within an hour or so down in Fort Pierce, Florida. At the same time, though, we got some other breaking news yesterday that the judge is asking all of the attorneys involved here to come ready to argue as to when they want for the trial date to be pushed off to. When do they want for things to start? We know that a trial date was set for next month. The government requested that things be pushed off to mid-December. And then last week, attorneys for Walt Nada, the co-defendant, along with the former president, they asked that things be pushed off possibly until after uh, the, uh, the general election cycle for next year. So today, the judge will be forcing all the parties involved to make their case as to when they actually want for the trial date to be. And here's a little bit more on why the judge may be thinking along these lines from that federal prosecutor we've been speaking with. She's not interested in an indefinite date. She wants to do what she does with every other case. I need to pick a trial date. Tell me when you think you'll be ready, a reasonable amount of time, and that's a date we're going to pick. If you don't set a trial date, people lose track of their case and you don't do anything. And cases linger, and that's the last thing that she wants. So in this segment, we are about to speak about a third case involving the former president. This third one is out of Georgia, where yesterday a Supreme Court rejected his attorney's move to disqualify a district attorney in a case down there. This is a case revolving around the former president where he was heard on a recording asking a Georgia official to find additional votes after the 2020 general election cycle. They tried to disqualify that DA in her investigative process but that move was rejected, Veronica. So, so many things that we're watching, including the hearing that will be happening in Florida today in about an hour. All right, Abajoy Burnett live for us there on Capitol Hill. Abajoy, we're going to go ahead and circle back with you to get the latest. Thank you. Israeli President Isaac Herzog meeting with President Biden at the White House this afternoon. The meeting comes during a time of rising tensions between the two countries. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's effort to overhaul Israel's judiciary branch is one point of contention right now. The two presidents will also discuss the tension between the Israelis and the Palestinians. A new label could soon come to your favorite in-home Wi-Fi device. The White House has announced a new cybersecurity labeling program with companies, including Amazon and Best Buy, committed to offering it next year. Scripps News Deputy Political Director Joe St. George has a closer look at what it is and why this label is even necessary. Well, let's face it, a lot of things in our home rely on the Internet these days, from Wi-Fi enabled baby monitors to smart thermostats, smart televisions, even smart dishwashers exist nowadays. The White House's concern, more devices in homes are vulnerable to a potential cyber attack. Well, enter the U.S. Cyber Trust Mark, launched Tuesday morning by the White House. The labeling program is meant to give consumers peace of mind when they buy a product. Companies like Google, Logitech, Samsung, Best Buy, Amazon, and others are committed to offering it. The National Institute of Standards and Technology will work with the FCC, the White House says, to determine what threshold must be met to qualify for the label. I spoke with Ann Newberger, Deputy National Security Advisor for Cyber and Emerging Technology, about the importance of this label, what it is. She says that Energy Star label from a few years back that you see on washers and dryers is really inspiration for this new labeling program. Essentially be a government label that will be put, companies can put on consumer devices if they meet a cybersecurity standard. So that gives Americans the peace of mind to know that when they're shopping online, they should look for that label. And if a connected device has that label, it meets a government cybersecurity standard. Well, the goal will be to roll out this labeling program sometime in 2024. Companies will not be required to participate. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. We are closely following the detention of an American soldier right now in North Korea. U.S. officials say an American was detained after crossing into North Korea from South Korea. It is still unclear whether that soldier was on duty. The soldier is the first American detained in North Korea in nearly five years. Let's get you right out to congressional correspondent Stephanie Liebergen, who joins us now live from Capitol Hill. All right, Stephanie, so we now know that this was an American soldier that was detained. Has the Defense Department provided an update on the situation? Hey, Veronica. Well, the Defense Department has a briefing going on right now. And of course, the first question from a member of the press was information about this soldier. Now, Secretary Austin would only say that this U.S. soldier was on a tour of the area in the DMZ and that he crossed the border into, into North Korea. 
into North Korea willfully and without authorization. Uh, Secretary Austin saying the top concern, of course, is the soldiers' welfare. Um, and there will, of course, be more information to come in the hours and days and saying that the Defense Department is still currently working to notify the soldiers' families. But that's about all that was officially said by Secretary Austin. Now, we've got a lot of uh, media reporting and including from the Associated Press that reports that this soldier that crossed the border was recently released from a South Korean prison on an assault charge and that he was potentially facing military disciplinary action back in the United States. And according to the reporting, from the Associated Press that this soldier's in his early 20s and he was being escorted to the airport to get on a plane back to the U.S., but instead somehow joined this tour group heading for the DMZ um, instead of getting on that plane, Veronica. So that's some early reporting and getting some few more details about what may have happened um, there at the border, but still a lot of questions and a lot of things yet to be confirmed still. Yeah, really, really interesting. So we still don't really know as to why he was there exactly. But I wanted to ask you specifically about the DMZ stuff. What do we know about this area in between North and South Korea's borders? So this area is uh, called the Joint Security Area. So it's a like often photographed and visited area of the DMZ. Now the DMZ, the demilitarized zone, that's about a two and a half mile wide stretch of border along North Korea and South Korea um, that, you know, separates the two countries. So where this tour was happening, this joint um, security area is actually the only part of the North Korean and South Korean border where the soldiers really can be face to face with each other because normally there's that two and a half mile wide gap. So tours of this area were really common pre pandemic. They could see about as many as 100,000 people a year visiting this area on the South Korean side. Now, um, it is rare for someone to cross the border from South Korea into North Korea. The other way around, we see that much more frequently. There have been about 30,000 defections from the North into South Korea over the last 70 some years, but it's rare to see that unexpected border crossing go the other way. Now, again, we don't have confirmation yet on exactly why this U.S. soldier would have crossed the border um, or, you know, what the status of that person is in North Korean custody. Um, but Secretary Austin will be saying they believe he is in the custody of the North Koreans right now still working a lot um, on the back end to try to figure out what comes next. All right, Stephanie, we're reporting live from Capitol Hill. Stephanie, we'll be circling back with you. Thank you so much. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to take you to Italy. That is sweating it out right now like millions of people here in the U.S. Also, police in New York seizing a flood of new evidence from the home of the man accused in several Long Island murders. Also, don't forget, you can count on Scripps News for all of your news throughout the primetime hours beginning at 6 p.m. Eastern. If you have this and you get this, you could end up with this. Unexpected out-of-pocket costs, which for those on Medicare or soon to be is a good reason to take charge of your health care. So consider this. An AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan from United Healthcare. Why? Because Medicare alone doesn't pay for everything. And what it doesn't pay for, like deductibles and co-pays, could really add up, even thousands of dollars a year. Medicare Supplement Plans help by paying some of what Medicare doesn't and making your out-of-pocket costs a lot more predictable. Call United Healthcare today and ask for your free decision guide. Learn more about plan options and rates to fit your needs. Now, if you like this, greater freedom, you'll love that Medicare supplement plans have no networks and no referrals needed. See any doctor, any specialist, anywhere in the U.S., as long as they accept Medicare patients. These types of plans also give you more flexibility when traveling in the U.S. Your plan goes with you, anywhere you go in the country. Even better, these are the only plans of their kind, endorsed by AARP. Call United Healthcare today for your free decision guide. So if you have this and want less out-of-pocket costs and more peace of mind, consider adding this, an AARP Medicare Supplement Plan. Take charge of your health care today. Just use this or this to call United Healthcare about an AARP Medicare supplement plan. Do you spend hours maintaining your gutters? Save that time with LeafGuard's maintenance-free system. 
call 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Mesh filters sit on top of your gutters, building up debris and eventually clogging. Then they need to be cleaned too. Honestly, your home should have been built with LeafGuard gutters. LeafGuard's wraparound hood deflects debris and keeps water away from your home. The one-piece seamless system is strong, 20% thicker than average and built to last. Plus, LeafGuard is guaranteed to never clog for as long as you own your home. Right now, get a complete LeafGuard system for only $99 down, $99 a month, and $99 installation. You'll also receive a $100 Visa gift card with a free gutter inspection and in-home estimate. Damage from clogged gutters can cost you thousands. Never worry about clogged gutters again. Don't wait, you've still got time. Call 1-833-2-GUTTERS today. That's 1-833-2-GUTTERS. Quick reminder, we'd like to hear from you. You can give us a call on our Scripps News viewer hotline toll free. That number is on your screen right now. It's 1-833-4-SCRIPS. Feel free to share your comments and your story ideas. One of the world's top travel hotspots is becoming just that hot. Italy is issuing extreme health risk advisories for 16 cities, including Rome and Florence. Italy joins Spain and Greece with historically high temperatures, and climate experts believe this is just the beginning. Temperatures across Europe could continue to rise. Rome correspondent Giles Gibson joining us now live. And Giles, it feels like it doesn't matter where you are on the globe right now, it is just hot. So what is the temperature like right now, and is it going to come down anytime soon? Well, we've actually had record-breaking temperatures here in the Italian capital. Uh, the regional weather service for Lazio, which is the region of Italy that includes Rome, has said that in multiple locations across the city over the last few hours or so, that the record of uh, 105 degrees Fahrenheit has now been smashed. Uh, we are now moving through the peak of this heat wave here in Rome, but what's concerning authorities is that we are still going to be, uh, you know, with very high temperatures here in the Italian capital for several more days. It looks like these temperatures will, will stay pretty high until early next week or even the middle of next week. And of course, the longer that you have these hot temperatures without any rain in the forecast whatsoever, the more authorities are going to be concerned that we could see wildfires breaking out here in Italy as we've already seen uh, in neighboring Greece. We we're just looking at some video, Giles, and you see lots of folks out there on the streets, lots of tourists, obviously, and I, I had a chance to live in France for about a year, and, and I remember there wasn't a lot of air conditioning throughout parts of Europe. So what are officials doing right now in order to protect residents and the tourists from all of this heat? Well, of course, the temptation if you're here on holiday, you know, you've spent thousands of dollars potentially on your flights and your hotels and maybe booking some tours or excursions so the temptation is to just try and put your head down and you know tick off those sites like the Colosseum and the Pantheon off your list despite the fact that we are seeing record-breaking heat here in the Italian capital what the Civil Protection Agency for the city have done is they've actually put out uh, 28 checkpoints if you like these are kind of, you know, these stations that are manned by officers from the agency giving out advice and, and water. And they've actually also said that there have been 11 incidents. So it appears that, you know, more than 10 tourists or more than 10 people around those uh, checkpoints have run into some sort of difficulties. And that's something that we've seen over the last week or so. Tourists trying to battle through these temperatures around places like the Colosseum just misjudging it slightly, not drinking enough water and ending up fainting or getting very dehydrated. And that risk, of course, as these temperatures remain pretty high for the next week or so, that risk will still be there too. Yeah, it is definitely hot out there. Giles Gibson live for us there in Rome, Italy. Giles, thank you so much. And we have more coverage of the extreme heat in about 30 minutes from now. We're going to take a closer look at the sweltering heat in the United States and why there's a growing interest to visit Death Valley. What you need to know if you're planning on making the trip. Still to come on Scripps News Live, minesweepers are on a mission to make the front line safer for Ukrainian soldiers. We're going to show you how they are accomplishing that mission next. So... I 
How do I say this? I was hanging out in the bathroom, inspecting my butt. And I noticed back there... Don't make me say the word butt. Your rectum? Yes, my rectum. So I asked a couple of friends. You read internet forums and started crying. I did. Let's take a look. Okay. Go get your gloves. Dr. Brooks just gets you. Search, read reviews, book a doctor on ZocDoc. If you're living with diabetes, this is the sound that could change your life. Great news for people living with diabetes. Now you can wear a continuous glucose monitor and eliminate routine finger sticks. The days of repeated painful finger sticks are over. Call 800-719-8907. If you use insulin daily to manage your condition, a continuous glucose monitor could help you control your diabetes and reduce or eliminate those painful finger sticks. If you have Medicare or private insurance, US Med can deliver a CGM system right to your door. And if you qualify, there may be little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and we'll even bill your insurer directly. Call now to get your continuous glucose monitoring system so you can take control of your diabetes and get back to enjoying life. Call 800-719-8907. That's 800-719-8907. There's a new victim of identity theft every three seconds. And checking your credit score or bank statements may not be enough to alert you. That's because identity threats appear in more places than you realize. Identity thieves can use your information to open loans, transfer home titles, even commit crimes. Someone stole my information and tried to buy a car in my name. LifeLock monitors for threats to your identity, including ones you may miss, and alerts you if there's an issue. And if you're a victim, your dedicated U.S.-based restoration specialist will work to fix it. If something happens, you have somebody fighting for you. All plans backed by LifeLock's million-dollar protection package, including reimbursement for stolen funds. I know LifeLock has me covered. LifeLock. Identity theft protection starts here. Call the number on your screen or visit LifeLock.com 25 now and use promo code 25 now to save 25% on your first year of identity theft protection. Enroll now. I'm Del Walters, and this is The Debrief. Nearly 40 million Americans on alert. Breaking down the headlines. We're going to take a deeper dive. Scripps News brings you reporting from across the country. In downtown Baltimore. Live in Maricopa County. And around the world. The counteroffensive is likely to kick off. Scripps News, London. With up-to-the-minute information giving you the whole story. Let's get you caught up on some of today's top stories. The Debrief, live tonight, starting at 6, 5 central, only on Scripps News. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Ukrainian authorities say its forces shot down more than two dozen exploding drones and several cruise missiles in Odessa today. Those officials say while air defenses repelled the attacks, debris and shockwaves damaged a number of buildings. An elderly man was injured. Russia says the attack was retaliation for Ukraine targeting a bridge between Russia and Crimea yesterday. In the meantime, Ukraine has talked for months about its counteroffensive against Russia, and the U.S. and Europe are doing what they can to ensure that Ukraine isn't hampered by a shortage of artillery ammunition. The U.S. vowing it won't sacrifice its emergency reserve. Allies say the length of the war in Ukraine is a sign for Western countries to ramp up production of ammunition. And Ukrainian forces moving ahead with that counteroffensive in the east. But as they look to push Russian troops out of Ukrainian territory, minefields are among the many obstacles that have been slowing them down. Scripps News correspondent Jason Bellini spent time with mine sweepers who are working to make the front line safer for their fellow soldiers. And we do want to warn you right here, some may find parts of the story graphic. On the front line, rows of Russian mines, densely arrayed, carefully hidden, trap advancing Ukrainian troops in the kill zone of Russian artillery. Kill zones already destroying some of Ukraine's newly received Western armored vehicles. Without air support, NATO mine removal equipment intended to plow the path for troops and tanks sits on the sidelines, lest the Russians spot and destroy it. U.S. provided M58 mine clearing line charges can quickly clear an area, but their range is limited. 
Grenade dropping drones can help, but only for unburied mines. For now, human hands must perform the death-defying duty of clearing the way for the counteroffensive, those of combat engineers known as sappers, like this 29-year-old platoon commander, callsign Baron. Baron is the Ukrainian word for the prey-seeking monitor lizard. His prey, Russian mines and booby traps. The engineering sapper unit moves forward ahead of the infantry. Our motto is always first, always forward. Always first, always forward, but are you taking out one mine at a time when you've got thousands on a battlefield? Look, when we go in and remove these mines, we secure the passage, a corridor. We give our guarantee that everything will be fine there. There's not a single mine explosive device left behind. Us sappers who've checked a road get into our vehicle and we go through, give our seal of approval, and then others boldly pass after us. That is, we do not just demine and say, go ahead and see if you blow up or not. Varon shows us the deadly gamut of Russian mines collected by his platoon these past 500 plus days, including internationally banned anti-personnel mines. This mine is extremely difficult to detect. You can see a lot of military amputees now, and I can guarantee that they were blown up on these mines. In this mine, there are 2,500 shrapnel pieces. On the front line, 10 miles from this secret Ukrainian military training ground, sappers hold the key to successful counteroffensive assaults against the Russians. Can you really be taking out mines when you have Russians shooting at you? Yes. I can tell you five days ago we had night work in the enemy's gray zone. We did engineering reconnaissance of the enemy's mine barriers. We came under machine gun fire. The enemy probably had identified us. They shot at us. We laid down on the ground and continued to work. With the Russians mounting counterattacks, the sapper's work also includes planting mines defensively. When we install an anti-tank mine, we install a surprise mine under it and load it. When the enemy picks up an anti-tank mine, the unloading mechanism on the lower mine is activated and it explodes. That is, one sapper gives a gift to another sapper. There are sappers on the other side who are also very cunning and show ingenuity. They do their job well, but we will outwit them. The next few months, do you think they're going to be the most intense of your life? This is known only to our commanders. Basically, we work every day. We don't have a day when we don't work. We are ready for it to be hot. I will even say we are now waiting for the moment when it will be very, very hot. Very hot if and when Ukrainian infantry breaks through Russia's first line of defense and fights its way to the next and the next with Varon and the sappers always first, always forward. And that was our Jason Bellini there reporting from Ukraine. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live, including details about new evidence in a decades-long investigation into the killings of several women in Long Island. It feels like the sun is actually touching you. It's, it's, your skin gets really hot to feel um, you feel some discomfort. That uncomfortable heat isn't keeping visitors away from Death Valley National Park. What you need to know if you decide to make that dangerous journey, we're, we're going to explain after this. When Lila was ready to sell her ring, she sent it to Worthy, where they took care of everything and auctioned it on her terms. Then Worthy sent Lila her money. You're worthy of more. Get started at Worthy.com. Do you have a box of videotapes, film reels, or photos that are degrading? Legacy Box professionally converts them to DVDs, thumb drive, or the cloud. Legacy Box is simple and safe. 
with over a million satisfied customers. Visit LegacyBox.com. You ever feel like you're stuck in debt? Hi, Jacko here from Debt Blue, and yeah, I know all about getting stuck to things. Makes me just want to curl up and hide. <laughs> but there's good news. Debt can be fixed faster, easier, and with less stress when you use Debt Blue. The stress from debt can be overwhelming and wreak havoc on your life. Don't go it alone. With Debt Blue Success Guarantee, it doesn't cost anything unless your debt is reduced or completely resolved. So there's absolutely no risk. See for yourself how easy it is to get started with free information. There are no upfront costs. So if you're stuck in a cycle of debt, come out of hiding and give Debt Blue a call right now. Let us show you how 10 minutes could save you thousands and help get you unstuck. Call 1-888-279-1982. That's 1-888-279-1982 today. Carvana has hundreds of thousands of five-star reviews and counting. The whole process was really simple and easy, and this is my third time selling to Carvana. You just enter your license plate or your VIN, answer a few questions, boom, you get a real off. Sell your car to Carvana today. I work at Lumi Deodorant, and I'm going to tell you how to get the best deal on Lumi. It's the starter pack. You pick two full-size deodorants, and you get two mystery items for free and free shipping. So now's your chance to try Lumi whole body deodorant with 72 hours of odor control. Hey there, welcome to Scripps News Live. Great to see you on this Tuesday. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Let's get you caught up on the day's top stories right now. Former President Trump says the Justice Department sent him a letter saying he is a target of an investigation into efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election. Letters like these often precede indictments. Trump is also the target of a Georgia investigation and he's calling these probes, quote, witch hunts and the weaponization of law enforcement. U.S. officials say an American who was detained after crossing into North Korea from South Korea is a soldier. It's unclear whether the soldier was on duty. 30,000 North Koreans have defected to the South Korean border since the Korean War ended, but defections to North Korea are rare. President Biden will call for reforms when he meets with Israeli President Isaac Herzog at the White House this afternoon. President Biden made it clear that he doesn't like the shift that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has made to the right including overhauling the Israeli judicial system. The two leaders will also discuss Iran's efforts to destabilize the region. Now to New York, where there are new developments in the Gilgo Beach murder investigations. Police took more than 200 weapons from the suspect's home. And this is only some of the evidence that authorities have collected since his arrest last week. Investigators say there's been a flood of new information and evidence. The 59-year-old accountant has been charged with the deaths of three women whose remains were found on Long Island's Gilgo Beach. Scripps News National Correspondent Alex Miller joins us now live from New York. Alex, bring us up to speed and tell us more about this case and what the latest is in the investigation. Well, Veronica, this investigation is developing at a very rapid pace. It's not just that they uncovered 200 guns. It's how many of those were unregistered. 92 of them were registered. Uh, and this is just one piece of information that investigati investigators have been able to uncover as they've executed search warrants both in his house, in a storage unit. They say uh, that there is just a flood of information that they are being able to find um, from securing these search warrants. And it is just really crazy when you think about the fact that this case has been going on for 10 years and there is a 59 year old married man a father of two has been the one uh, that has been charged in this case uh, and investigators say they don't believe that after they talked to the family that they knew anything listen when we initially uh, informed them about uh, their their husband their father uh, they were they were shocked um, they were disgusted uh, they were embarrassed uh, so if you ask me, I, I don't believe that they knew about this double life that Mr. Harriman was, was, was living. 
and he is now on suicide watch after being denied bail, charged with the murder of three women named as a, a suspect in a fourth case. All of these women, sex workers, who were found murdered uh, in one specific area out on Long Island. Police say uh, that they first that he first got on their radar earlier this year after a witness connected his pickup truck to one that they saw back in 2010. They got help from the FBI to surveil Hurman 24 hours a day. And the way they were able to connect him officially was that they found a pizza crust that they were able to use the DNA from that to connect it uh, to the burlap, which these victims were found in. They also say he bought a burner phone uh, and used that to talk to his victims shortly after they were killed, uh, that he that he tossed them. He used fake email addresses to look at information, news articles and things of that nature uh, about this case and they also say um, that he is one what he is likely the one who called the alleged victims family one of the victims uh, say that they received a call from an anonymous person basically tormenting them about this case he has pleaded not guilty Veronica and he will be back in court very soon on August 1st this case truly is remarkable. Alex Miller reporting live from New York for us. Alex, thank you. Investigators in Oregon believe that the same person may have killed four women during a three-month period. They say that they have identified a person of interest. It was just two weeks ago that Portland police said that it, it didn't appear that these cases were related. The DA's office says the public is not in danger, which has led to speculation that the person of interest might be in custody. The Oregon State Medical Examiner has not shared how these four women died. A bank robber in Texas who hit three banks in 10 days is now being called the sticky note bandit. Justice correspondent Jamal Andros explains authorities are now offering a cash reward for this male suspect who was dressed as a woman. The FBI is looking for a bank robber they've dubbed the Sticky Note Bandit. This man dressed in a wig, sunglasses, and a mask allegedly has knocked over three banks in 10 days, sliding a threatening note to the bank teller and then leaving with an undisclosed amount of money. The Sticky Note Bandit has robbed not once, not twice, but three times. There's no reason to think that he won't rob again. Connor Hagan works for the Houston FBI office. If you're looking at a map where these robberies occurred, a couple of them were in Houston and one of them was in Harris County. So right then and there you have three agencies that are involved just based on the territory where this individual is striking. Hagan says it's not unusual to see these spree bank robbers. Three in 10 days is not all that unusual. There have certainly been cases in the past where individuals who may be on parole or probation from, from prison uh, for previously robbing banks go and realize, hey, I've only got a limited number of time after robbing the first bank, and so they you know, hit other banks. Fortunately, no one has been injured so far in these robberies, but Hagen says the people involved are still impacted. Some you know, mom of two kids who goes into a bank to get a few hundred dollars for groceries, or maybe a teller that just started working there you know, three months earlier. Uh, these are all individuals that are victimized and impacted when someone comes in and, and threatens their lives in exchange for an undisclosed amount of money. The suspect is described as a 5'8 black male with a thin to medium build, wearing female clothes and carrying a black purse. Jamal Andrus, Scripps News. The FBI is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the identification and arrest of this suspect. Now, if you have any information, you're being asked to call the Houston field officer. That number is 713-693-5000. It's right there on your screen. Coming up next on Scripps News Live, we're going to take a closer look at the growing efforts to preserve black cemeteries. We all deserve a standard of dignity. There should be a, a baseline that's set for all of us in life and in death. We're going to show you how one university is working to restore neglected parts of black burial grounds. And a reminder right here, you can find our stories and much more online. Check us out at scriptsnews.com. Also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Threads. If you, like many people, are covered by both Medicare and your state's Medicaid, Here's something important to know. Now you could get even more health benefits than you already have. It's the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. To find out if you or someone you care about is eligible, it's easy. Call now to talk with us. We can explain it all and answer your questions. 
Medicaid gives you benefits, and Medicare gives you some too. But a dual complete plan can add even more benefits and features compared to original Medicare. You'll have lots of doctors and hospitals to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, including brand names. And depending on where you live, you could enjoy other benefits too, like more dental care and rides to and from your doctor or pharmacy. Most plans even give you up to $300 a month to help pay for covered over-the-counter products, groceries, and new this year, utility bills. And best of all, with this plan, there's no extra cost to you. Remember, if you have Medicare and Medicaid, chances are you could get a dual complete plan. So call now to talk with us. Our agents are available to help. We know healthcare can be confusing. United Healthcare can straighten things out. And with over 40 years of experience, you can count on us to be there for you. With a dual complete plan, you could have a wide choice of doctors to choose from. Zero dollar copays on all covered prescriptions, help paying for covered over the counter products, groceries, and utility bills. More dental coverage too, all at no extra cost. If you have both Medicare and Medicaid, you may be eligible for dual complete. So call the number on your screen now to see if you're eligible or to enroll. There's more for you with the United Healthcare Dual Complete Plan. It's Christmas all July at Balsam Hill. It's never too early to save, so why wait? Get amazing deals now on our wide variety of exclusive designs. Find the perfect tree at up to 50% off at balsamhill.com. I'm Shiza, co-founder of Our Place, and this is how we created the 8-in-1 award-winning Always Pan. We partnered with the best experts in sustainability and design. And after three years, 43 prototypes, and hundreds of egg tests later, we did it. Today, we have over 30,000 five-star reviews, and the Always Pan just keeps selling out. Ready to make cooking a lot easier? You're watching Scripps News, streaming everywhere, totally free. Want to see more? Grab the app on your favorite streaming platform or go to ScrippsNews.com to find every way to watch. Go to ScrippsNews.com now to find out more. Hey there, welcome back to Scripps News Live. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. So the U.S. is joining Canada and Europe in approving the first long-acting drug to protect babies and toddlers against RSV. The FDA greenlighting injections of an antibody drug for children up to two years old. RSV is a common respiratory virus that causes cold-like symptoms. The disease sends thousands of people to the hospital every year and can be life-threatening for the very young and the elderly. Drug makers are currently working on an RSV vaccine. New data suggests childhood immunization rates are improving around the world. According to estimates by the United Nations Children's Fund and the World Health Organization, there were 4 million more immunizations last year than in the previous year. However, immunization rates are still not at pre-pandemic levels. One UN expert says that world leaders must strengthen their efforts to address health inequities. Several black cemeteries across the United States have virtually been eliminated from history. But one university is stepping in to help restore dignity to people who were buried many years ago. Scripps News correspondent Matt Pearl has this story for us. The cemetery where Corey Givens Jr. gives us a tour. These are my great grandparents. Is the cemetery that holds his ancestors. Parents. Sometimes you gotta come back out here and do some self-maneuvering. At every stop, after every pause, he feels compelled to clean. I miss him dearly, I miss him. He actually brought Dr. King to St. Pete once. Yeah. It's a common impulse when we visit our loved ones. It's a care we presume any burial ground will uphold. But it's a care that Givens and others have learned many others take for granted. I think we all deserve a standard of dignity. There should be a, a baseline that's set for all of us in life and in death. Cemeteries can feel timeless. Black cemeteries have too often seen time lead to uprooting and neglect. This is the McCray family plot. Givens now, works uh, with the Lincoln Cemetery the Society in Gulfport, Florida. One of many groups speaking up for those 
who have sometimes literally been pushed around. Some at Lincoln were once laid at what's now the stadium parking lot for Tropicana Field. Tropicana Field is an example of how eminent domain separated people from the, their land. They Antoinette Jackson is the anthropology chair at the University of South Florida. She says when black cemeteries were created all over America, they were often segregated without the same protections or government funding as white ones. When black communities were displaced by eminent domain, so in many cases were their cemeteries. They thought that this was going to be a place that their loved ones be, would be safe and, and you know, rest in, in peace. And then fast forward, you know, people can just, you know, seize that property or build over it or, or you know, they, you know, people aren't able to, you know, keep those kinds of things up. Recent years have led to rising voices. Jackson oversees the Black Cemetery Network, which connects black cemeteries from Maryland to Missouri to, of course, Florida. This is where I come for a family reunion. At Lincoln, headstones speak of faith, fraternity, and country. Last month, the Florida legislature passed a bill to assist and protect historic resting places. Last winter, Congress passed an omnibus package that included $3 million a year to preserve black burial grounds. Still a little bit of money. Like, it, we need way more money, maybe way more resources of all those things. But I always say it's a good start. A good start doesn't track down missing records. It doesn't undo eminent domain. But for Givens and a growing number, speaking up about their loved ones. He was our Martin Luther King in St. Pete, pretty much. <laughs> has become as much of an impulse as cleaning the ground where they rest. In Gulfport, Florida, I'm Matt Pearl. Coming up next, a massive body of water is shrinking. We're going to explain why it's all happening and what it means for the people who rely on it next. Also, a sailor is rescued after spending three months lost at sea. We'll have the details on how he survived. Hi, I'm Kirk Kaiser, and did you know the average funeral costs around $10,000? And if you don't have enough insurance to cover funeral costs, credit card debt, and other expenses, your family is going to get stuck with the bill. Don't let that happen. Call right now. And if you're over 50, you can get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance, and your acceptance is guaranteed. That's right. If you're over 50, you can't be turned down for this insurance, regardless of your health. Plus, there's no medical exam and no health questions. Your rate will never go up. Your coverage will never go down. And rates start as low as $5 a week. Your coverage begins as soon as your application is received. Don't wait until it's too late. Just call 800-760-7793. Coverage is guaranteed regardless of your health and cannot be canceled without your approval. Don't leave your family with a huge bill for your funeral. With one fast and easy call, get up to $30,000 in affordable life insurance to help cover funeral expenses and credit card debt, and maybe even leave something for your kids and your grandkids. Remember, if you're over 50, you can't be turned down regardless of your health. There's no medical exam and no health questions. Best of all, your rates start as low as $5 a week and your rate will never increase. Nothing is more important than family. So don't leave them with a lot of bills to pay when you're gone. Don't leave your family with a lot of bills to pay for your funeral. Call right now. Acceptance is guaranteed. Call right now. Call now. Call 800-760-7793. That's 800-760-7793. How can a photo become a vibrant part of your home? When you go to TryFracture.com and print your images directly on glass. Get beautiful depth and clarity on a sleek, frameless print that's easy to hang and looks incredible in any space. Go to TryFracture.com now to save 20% on glass prints. How does Klein Inspector get among the most big verdicts and settlements of any law firm in the country? because Klein Inspector is an award-winning team with five doctor lawyers, the most of any firm in the United States. And that's why the New York Times calls Klein Inspector a powerhouse law firm. So if a defective product, motor vehicle accident, 
or medical malpractice caused a catastrophic injury, call Klein Inspector. Do you have an idea for a story you would like to see or a comment on our coverage you want to share? We want to hear from you. Call our Scripps News viewer hotline at 833-4-SCRIPPS. That's 833-4-SCRIPPS. reminder right here we'd like to hear from you you can give us a call on our Scripps News Euro hotline that number is toll free 1-833-4-SCRIPPS feel free to share your comments and your story ideas so millions of people across the country right now are under heat advisories the south and the west are feeling some of the hottest temperatures national correspondent James Packard has details on the sweltering heat from the red hot west coast Across the South and Southwest, record-breaking heat. More than 70 million people under heat advisories or alerts. Feels like you're actually on fire after you're out here for a while. In the Southwest, triple-digit highs are the norm. Some places not getting below 90 degrees at night. In Phoenix, it's been two weeks straight of 110 degrees plus. Getting overheated like that, you start to get tired, irritable, angry, you're not thinking clearly. Even in Connecticut, it's hot. Country singer Jason Aldean cut a concert short amid a bout of heat exhaustion and dehydration. You want to make sure that you're hydrating adequately. But if you start to get to the point where you're drinking over two to like say four liters an hour, you can start to be drinking too much water. The general rule of thumb is to take your weight and divide it by two. And that's generally how much uh, else is it that you should be drinking on, on a regular day. Thousands lost power in Utah for a third day as cooling centers open up in major cities from Los Angeles to Denver. And workers from the streets of the cities to the fields of California's Coachella Valley are left exposed to the elements. We'll cut the working hours off an hour or two just because it's too hot in the, in the afternoon to be working outdoors. You don't want to get sunburned, so you get a big sunburn on the face. That's why you have hats, the glasses. Uh, I have this neck scarf here just to protect the neck because it gets really red. It turns purple at some point just because it gets so hot. A brutal summer and in a changing climate, warnings from scientists to be prepared for many more seasons like it. And that was James Packer there reporting for us from Los Angeles. So the extreme heat is drawing visitors to the hottest spot on Earth, Death Valley National Park. The National Park Service says the hottest temperature ever recorded at the park is 134 degrees. And that was set back in 1913. On Sunday, the mercury crept pretty close to 128 degrees. Now, despite the dangerous heat, visitors continue to flock to the park along the California-Nevada border. Nicole Adler, a park ranger, says that she understands why so many people are intrigued, but warns that you need to be careful. It is part of our, our human nature. We are all curious about many different things, and so folks are curious about what these high temperatures uh, might be. And then on Sunday, we were flirting with the idea that we might get to 130, which would be um, a, a record uh, temperature. Not the hottest, but uh, in the top five hottest. If you're going to go out and experience Death Valley on foot, we recommend that you finish your outdoor activities um, by uh, 10 a.m. So this morning when I came into the office at 6 a.m., it was 101, which is probably our low for today. For advice to anyone who might be considering a visit during the heat, be sure to hydrate, eat salty snacks, Stay close to your car and keep your car on the paved road. Now, she also stresses the importance of knowing the signs of dehydration and heat exhaustion. Extreme weather conditions are causing a massive lake to shrink out west. National correspondent Marita Giorgio takes a closer look at what it all means for millions of people who are depending on this water source. Here at Northwest Montana's pristine Flathead Lake, we're seeing water anomalies that we haven't seen in our lifetime, and it's not just here. I'm one of the few people that have my boat in. Most of my neighbors pulled theirs. They never pulled their boats ever till the end of August or mid-September. But that's the reality this year for many boat owners on Northwest Montana's pristine Flathead Lake, the largest freshwater lake west of the Mississippi. This is just a beautiful lake. It's it's wonderful living here. The water is the lifeblood of us as tribal people. You can't get more important than that. <laughs> um, 
and our relationship with the water is, is paramount. Without it, it is life for us. Without it, we're not here. And now that water is down, almost two feet below what's considered full pool. That's never happened during the summer months since the lake's SKQ hydroelectric dam was built on the southwest end in 1930. It's owned by Energy Keepers, a corporation of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes, which generates electricity for parts of Montana and elsewhere. We have never been this low in the period of record for water supply coming into the lake, ever. Some frustrated locals have asked if the water could have been managed better through the dam and the amount of water released from the lake. Operators say it's not about the water being let out, but a lack of water coming in because of drought and changing climate conditions. I can't create water. <laughs> you know, we can only do what we can do with the water that's coming. Water management is going to define the West for better or for worse because we ha are in a arid to semi-arid climate, this whole side of the continent. The license from the federal government requires SKQ Dam to release a minimum amount of water downstream for endangered species protection. SKQ operators say they went to near minimum outflows back in March, but it wasn't enough to keep levels up. Every single month, the water supply forecast has come in below average except for May. A dry winter followed by an extremely warm May meant a rapid melt of snowpack all at once. Nobel Prize winning climate change expert Steve Running predicted decades ago what's happening now. These are literally the same topics that 25 years ago I was saying are on their way and sure enough they're here. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, these aren't surprises. Now, SKQ dam operators say it's a zero-sum game. The lowest amount of water that can be released from the lake is more than what's coming in naturally through rain and snowmelt. It's a big deal. Uh, it's, and so from that perspective, you know, we have to think, well, this is the tip of the iceberg. It's a problem we've seen elsewhere in the West. Lake Mead, which supplies most of the water used in the Las Vegas Valley, fell to record lows this time last year. At Flathead, the issue is more than just having a lake for Montanans to boat on. So for us, it's generation. We're far below average. Mm -hmm. In the entire region, hydropower is about 60% of what we're normally generating this time of year for electricity. Downstream, low flows are also hard on native fish. It's impacting farmers who rely on the water for irrigation. There's also economic impacts of a shrinking lake with local officials estimating Flathead generates hundreds of millions of dollars in recreational spending. It's unfortunate and I'm sure it's hurting some businesses around here. Three months out of the year is all of our business. And so when we start seeing it slow down just because of the water level, that's a big bummer for, I mean, everybody. This lakeside restaurant may fare better than others because it has a floating dock that can adjust to lower water levels. Floating docks are awesome to have in this situation. Boaters can't dock at other restaurants. Rentals are slow and fuel sales are way down after so many residents pulled their boats from the water. A push by local politicians to add more water from the Hungry Horse Reservoir upstream was denied, with the management team citing concerns over impacts on fish and water levels next year. As it stands, people who want to recreate on Flathead Lake may need to make some adjustments. You can only make the best of it because it's, you know, nothing that uh, yeah. any of us can control, but right. try to stay positive and keep hoping people get out on the lake and come here. But it's still a beautiful lake. Um, I don't think we lose that. I think we lose this, this luxury of having the lake at full pool through the entirety of the summer. You know, that's a luxury that's been um, afforded to us since the dam was built. Maritza Giorgio, Scripps News, Flathead Lake. Well, the crew of a Mexican tuna boat found a sailor who had been stranded in the middle of the ocean for three months. They spotted Tim Shattuck and his dog Bella on an incapacitated boat 1,200 miles from land. Shattuck said a storm knocked out power and all the electronics on his boat. Now he and Bella were able to survive on raw fish and rainwater. Shattuck says other than needing some rest and some good food, he feels like he is in pretty good health. Awesome. I'm Veronica Dela Cruz. Thank you so much for joining us today. For the audience leaving us right now, your local programming is up next. Don't forget, you can always check us out on scriptsnews.com. Now, if you are staying with us, we have much more news headed your way right here on Scripps News Live. I'll be back with you at 3 p.m. Eastern, and Lauren Magarino is up next. She has more.